Another unarmed black man killed by police? Let's look at the facts. My name is Nate Brody. I'm a lawyer and former Leo. Leo stands for law enforcement officer. Today we're talking about George Floyd. Now for those of you who don't know, George Floyd is a black man who died in a hospital after an altercation with police in Minnesota. All of my videos, I like to start with the facts. So we're gonna do the same here. Police were responding to a report of a man passing a bad check. Now the police arrived and placed the suspect under arrest. Now, I don't care what anybody's telling you on any other video. If you were a law enforcement officer in the United States, you know a couple of things. When you place handcuffs on somebody, you are now responsible for that person. That person is in your custody. That means you're responsible for that person's safety. That also means if that person gets sick, you take them to the hospital. If that person is dehydrated and needs water, you give them water. That person is your prisoner and you are responsible for the health and safety of your prisoner. So let's look at what happened before the violence occurred. This video obtained by CBS News shows what appears to be the start of the confrontation between George Floyd and Minneapolis police officers. The video from a restaurant security camera shows officers taking him into custody, but the restaurant's owner says it does not show Floyd resisting arrest. Now from this video, it looks like we have a compliant suspect and the officer has total control. The officer obviously seized him. He's not free to leave. Now, placing handcuffs on a suspect does two things. Every officer is going to know this. The first thing, it protects me, the officer, from the suspect. You're handcuffed, right? The second thing it does, it protects the suspect from me. Because if you're free and you start doing crazy stuff and things escalate, I may kill you or overreact or something. So we're all protected. I place the handcuffs on you. That protects me and you from anything that may happen. Now, let's go to the second part of the video. Now, I just want to be very clear. In this part of the video, the suspect is handcuffed. Four police officers were responding to a call about counterfeiting on Monday evening. Floyd is pinned to the ground by a white officer with his knee at the back of his neck. People gathered in the crowd plead with the officer to ease up. Now, what are we looking at here? We're looking at a handcuffed suspect face down and the officer has his knee in the man's neck. This is one of the most dangerous positions that the suspect could be in. And for every officer out there, everyone understands you don't put suspects in what we call the prone position. Let me explain it to you. Like I used to explain it when I trained officers in the academy. Now, and so you guys know that I'm not just bullshitting you here. I was a certified instructor in handcuffing techniques for law enforcement officers. This is what we trained them to do. Now, sometimes when you arrest a suspect and there's an altercation, sometimes you have to put handcuffs on the suspect and the suspect's on the ground. Generally, the suspect will be face down and you apply the handcuffs, right? Because you're applying handcuffs to the rear. That's usually department policy. I know it, it is here in New York, but maybe for in other locations, but here, you always handcuff everybody to the back. No handcuffs to the front. Unless, you know, pregnant women or there's some like, you know, other reason why you have to, but everybody goes to the back. Now, we always, always demand that if you're handcuffing a suspect face down on the floor and that person is handcuffed, you must as soon as possible Get that suspect out of that position, the prone position. Because restraining someone in the prone position, face down, hands behind their back, on the floor, can lead them to suffocate. Now this is trained in all police academies. A, a liability nightmare by me putting weight down on the back of this compliant individual's neck with his head rotated and downward pressure, I have the potential to do a lot of damage and it's happened in a number of cases so if you have a suspect face down and you've handcuffed them you must immediately or as soon as possible 
get them out of that position so they can breathe freely. So to leave a suspect in the prone position for eight, nine, 10 minutes is unthinkable. This is why you'll see after officers place handcuffs on a suspect, they're picking them up or they're turning the person over so the person is not in the prone position. So they don't suffocate. This is officer training 101. So what is this officer doing? And it gets worse from there. This officer is now applying pressure on top of this person in a prone position, making it even harder for this person to breathe. Again, every police academy on the planet tells you, don't keep suspects in the prone position because they can suffocate. And especially don't put more pressure on top of them because it can make them suffocate even faster. It exacerbates the situation. On the ground, and I wanna try and pull that up to his armpit as much as I can, but I definitely want it against his body. This knee is across the shoulder blades, and I'm not putting a ton of pressure on his back. A couple reasons we don't want to do that. Number one, we don't want to restrict their breathing. But this officer goes even farther. He puts his knee on the suspect's neck. I'm going to say this. Every officer, I think, in the United States knows that there are some no zones. And your neck is a big no zone. Now, every officer is going to tell you, you want to avoid putting any pressure on someone's neck if possible. The neck is number one on the list of do not put pressure on any suspect's neck. And the only time you do put pressure on a suspect's neck is if that you have no other option and you believe deadly physical force is warranted. And even if you do feel that you're justified and you put pressure on a suspect's neck, you must release that hold. You must release that pressure as soon as possible, or your prisoner could be killed or injured seriously. Just imagine being placed in a chokehold for seven minutes. Most people can hold their breath for three minutes. Just imagine being put in a chokehold for seven minutes. Just to be clear, the suspect is in custody and is handcuffed. Mr. Floyd was handcuffed. My last issue with this, the number of officers to the suspect. Now, at the beginning, it seems like the suspect is complying. ...from a restaurant security camera shows officers taking him into custody. But the restaurant's owner says it does not show Floyd resisting arrest. We don't know what happened between the initial call and the initial video and what happened when the police officer has his knee on the suspect's neck. But what we do know is that there were multiple officers there. So if you have two, three, four, five officers at the location... The suspect is handcuffed. Why are you leaving your knee on his neck for seven minutes? It's multiple officers and one unarmed, handcuffed suspect face down on the floor. Why do you need to put your knee in his neck? What is, what's, what's this guy doing? But let's not be confused about what the facts are. One, the suspect was handcuffed. Two, the suspect was restrained. Three, the suspect was not a threat to this officer or any of the other officers there in this position. Four, there were multiple officers on the scene to restrain the suspect, even if he went a little cuckoo. My conclusion is simple. This officer used an unreasonable amount of force to effectuate this arrest. And in doing so, he killed this suspect. This officer should be prosecuted for the homicide. Now, there may be some more facts that come out later that changes my opinion from what I'm seeing right now. And if they do, I will let you know how my opinion changed. But as of right now, there's no way anyone can say that this was justified based on what we have in front of us. Was this situation motivated by race or just bad police tactics? So without any more information, these were 100% bad police tactics. But did it depend on whether this suspect was black or white? I just don't know. I just am concerned that it seems to happen more often than not to people of color. But in this situation, who knows? But this officer should be prosecuted for a homicide. My name is Eight, and I'm out of here. Peace.